my own gums. Yes, what is happening, my mates? I'm Thomas Griffin, and this is Series 3 of My Own Gums. On this week's app, I'm having a chinwag with Matt Field. His Instagram handle, at Materialist, announces his fascination with material goods, and he's carefully considered and composed fit pics, making your favourite tastemaker's favourite tastemaker. Matt's from West Yorks, near where I'm living at the moment. I've run into him at a few clothes he does at Owl Store in Harrogate, and I've always buzzed off chatting to him about nice gear. I'm dead excited to tap into his big fashion brain and find out which clothes and brands get his juices flowing. Now, if you're already subscribed to us on your podcast provider, then one way you can support the channel is going over to YouTube and clicking subscribe over there. Drop us a comment on your fave episode and send it to your best mates on WhatsApp. Word of mouth is going to be the new social media in 2024. You heard it here first. Big thanks to Native Places at Juicy Street Warehouse in Manchester for sorting us out with the lovely recording rooms. Couldn't have done it without you. Right, let's get into it. This is my own garms with Materialist. Matt, how are you doing, man? All right, man. Thanks for inviting me along. Absolute pleasure, mate. How was your drive over? Train, mate. Train? Oh, for real? Yeah. So I've got a good um, Yorkshire to Manchester hack. Get on at New Pudsy. I'm from Bramley, so it's the stop before. Big car park, yeah. yeah it's yeah, class, so isn't it? And it's dirt cheap. It's like hour and ten minutes, fine. And so did you manage to find a good coffee shop in Manchester when you got here? Just Fig and Sparrow for a quick latte. Okay, yeah, I don't know Fig and Sparrow. Just Northern Quarter, just, yeah. All right, we'll check it out. I'm going to need recaffeinating after this one, I think. Yeah, man, well, we'll take you for lunch later on. Over. Where Where are you thinking? Maybe Cabana, actually, if you're okay. up for it. I've never, I've never been, but Neil Summers like raves about it. So. Okay, well, if he gets the Neil Summers, <laughs> I, I think... These podcasts are going to get Neil Summers mentioned in some way in every <laughs> single one of them. But if it, it gets his seal of approval, I'm down. He's just a geezer, isn't he? So, <laughs> <laughs> so you've been doing this commute over the Pennines a little bit recently because you've done a bit of a job switch. Mm-hmm. Um, where are you at and how's that treating you? So I'm working for um, a company called Brogue Trader. Okay. But the shop that I work in in Leeds is going to be a, a, it's a loke shop, basically. So right, nice. Bench-made footwear. Um like made in England, like good year welted, resolable, just proper, proper nice, nice stuff, you know. And obviously, there's sustainable element to them as well. They're all good year welted, so they can have the soles resold as long as you look after the upper stuff. So it's like you know, working for with product that is kind of you know it's ethical, yeah. And in terms of the process, you know, it's like it still goes through over two hundred processes to make one pair of shoes. You know what I mean? It's like. Benchmade shoes are incredible, man. When you, you know, I went to the factory and it's just, um, it's a local factory in Kettering. Yeah. To see them being made and it kind of gave me a different kind of level of appreciation mm. of what each pair of shoes go through to get on the shelf. You know what I mean? It's like, it's crazy. So talk to us a bit about this term Benchmade because these are the kind of fashion terms that I don't know too much about and some other people might want to know about them. My understanding is like, not much machinery going on, or what's oh, the what's defo, the deal? Definitely lots of machinery okay. going on. So Big all the, exciting machinery. Yeah, yeah. All these diff, all these processes that they go through have like you know specific machines. So it's like when I say go through two hundred processes, it passes through so many pairs of hands through all these different machines. For what the, makes it bench made? Then is it is it just all in one factory or? Yeah. So it literally, like we you, we did our little tour, and you kind of get shown all the stations. Right. Got introduced some people who. You know, essentially, like some of these people have been in there for thirty years making shoes. Mad. You've got this guy who's the expert on this this particular machine. He's yeah. like the Ronaldo of that machine. Yeah. You know, what I mean, he's like he's just like the absolute biz at that. You know, it's it's mega to see these people who making that making it look so simple as well. Mm. And it's, it really is anything but. It's like you know, you have to do it and do it so much to get to a level. Yeah. So I I, I think from what I've gleaned from you, you get kind of excited by the processes that things have been through so going seeing something like that in person is that something that really tickles your fancy like so i lived in northampton for a while right and whilst i was there it's like i lived around the corner from the trickers factory right so it was i always really liked the idea of maybe going and having a look at the factory so okay like down the line that to, to where we're at now actually being able to go and go and see shoes being made was pretty mega it's something i think it's something i've always wanted to do so it kind of ticked a box for me in a way Amazing, kinda, man. and i guess when you start working for a new company getting that kind of knowledge that gives you the 
passion to sell what you're selling is mm -hmm. dead, dead important because if you can talk about that passionately um, to, I don't know what your role is in this particular company, but um, it's really going to help them along the line, isn't it? Getting the, everyone on board on the same page. Like You just pass pass all that onto the customer, basically. Yes. Yeah. Like, I'm, in, I'm into it anyway, but like just having that extra, that sort of deeper level of understanding um, and obviously telling people, you know, you need to look after these. Yeah. Yeah, properly. It's been through a lot. Like, don't be kicking, you... don't be kicking your shoes off. You know, what I mean, it's like <laughs> the, these these things have been like, you know, hand built by people. Are you a shoehorner? Got to be now, yeah. I mean, yeah, like, you're not getting them on without a shoehorn, oh, in, uh, unless you're fully on lace. I mean, like Red Wings, it takes you know you have to plan in an extra ten minutes, put on one on the morning. <laughs> I'm a recent convert to the shoehorn, and you know what? I think 95s are the only Nike that need shoehorning on because they've got the extra elastic bit in the bottom. Are you a shoehorner, Kian? Me? Yeah. Uh, oh, that's what I'm sensing to know. You need, if you've got 95s a collection, you need to get a shoehorn, man. There you, go. you put another two years on the life, I reckon. So before you were at this at, um, Rogue Trader. Broke Trader. Broke, fuck. See what they did there? Yeah, yeah, see what they did. Before, <laughs> before you were at Broke Trader, you were at Paul Smith for a long time mm -hmm. in Leeds. What was that getting on for? 10 years, was it? Eight and a bit years, yeah. That is a good stint, mate. Yeah. What were you doing there? Uh, so I was, was just that? store supervisor <clears throat> just um, for obviously a long time. Yeah. Um, I think when I first started for the brand, it was like I was just heavily into it still. I think I um, maybe grew out of the brand because I like I've kind of, you know, I've grown up with it and mm. kind of, but my own personal tastes have changed so much yeah even in the last sort of five years i would say so it's like yeah i think i kind of loved it in a way but it was time to move on it's just been it was good for me it's been a really good uh learning curve definitely um sir paul's like you know i think he's a pretty inspirational guy yeah yeah um he's always been someone who i've i've thought was like quite a, a visionary kind of person okay you know like, i don't know too much about him did um, he pop into the shop and say hello never never <laughs> Bastard. No, I, I, I was once in, i went to went to london for some training and we uh we were supposed to meet him and we all went up to his office right but it was in it was in paris somewhere he's fly, okay. flying out flying out all over the world like he does but Fashion like uh, yeah so um never never got to meet him got to stand in his office okay but it's a stylish uh, office isn't it we, I mean, like, have you seen Paul's office? It's like no, go on. Paul Smith's office is just like piled high with stuff. Yeah, like one of his saints, saints inspiration is everywhere. So okay. it's just like it literally got like artwork, books, memorabilia, mm. things that people have sent him in the post. Like so, it, it, wow. Like mad stuff. Like some someone sent him like a seashell in the post, and you know, okay. with a with postage stamps all over it. And so it just keeps that around him to kind of yeah, osmosize like the inspiration. Ephemera, from. you know. Yeah. Okay. So nice. he's got loads of cycling related stuff, cycling yeah, jerseys. Yeah, big into that, isn't it? I think I got some uh, Fred Perry, Paul Smith collaborative stuff maybe at some point with the subtle striping on the collar. He, I loves, got... he loves a collab, does Paul? Yeah. So yeah, lots of lots of Rafa stuff, lots of you know, as a brand, I think it's in, it's in the brand DNA to kind of like uh, do collabs with brands that he admires, mm. not just from a clothing point of view, but from a design point of view. Because yeah. like someone like Braun, for instance, like he. The shavers, the, yeah. So, but Bron, the same same company did the shamers, but uh, shavers, shamers. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, so like clocks, wall clocks. Oh yeah, little yeah. Uh, alarm clocks. I maintain he should have done the Dieter Rams turntable. Just like <laughs> that would have been a, a, a ultimate collab. That I, I would have definitely have a word. Gotten, in, gotten involved with one of them. Go and yeah. sneak a turntable into his office and see if it gets into him somehow. Oh man. Getting through Paul's PA is is is, is difficult. The best okay. times, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Rep your ends. So you are from Pontefract, right? Mm -hmm. Rep your ends and tell us a little bit about Pontefract and what you might see people wearing there, what they were wearing when you grew up, and how you kind of fit into all that stuff. Pontefract, Ponty, Ponte Carlo, Ponte Carlo. I love this pun. What's yeah. the What's the other one that's near you as Cass well? Cast Vegas, Cast Cass Vegas, Castleford. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> Ponty, you know. Very working class. Clothing's not a priority, I think, for most people okay. in Pontty. So I think it's just kind of, you know, I think there was only ever one proper clothing shop when I was growing up. Like, uh, Gia, Gia, spelled G-H-I-A, clothing, Gia. G-H-I-A. I think it's still there, okay. actually. I think that was like a uh, Ford motor car <laughs> yeah. styling thing, yeah. was it? Was it affiliated with that or was it just a... Don't think so. No. I don't know. 
What kind of brands are we talking? Diesel, Fenchurch, okay. that kind of... Yeah, small town menswear shop yeah. and other ones. We had a few in Chorley. Oh, yeah. Um, is it still going now, do you think? I think it's still there. I don't very often go back to Pony. Okay. Uh, actually, my dentist is on that street, so... Once you've got a good dentist, you'll travel for you hundreds to, of miles to get to there. these days. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So people's concerns were elsewhere other than the, what, what they were wearing. Um, yeah. Did you find yourself kind of rallying against that as a youth or were you that way inclined until you left there i defo had like you know i would go on nights out and stuff and people would be like you're not from here are you okay <laughs> that, that, that kind of thing all the time because so, you were wearing I ne- I, i've never had a really pronounced northern proper like all right cock you know what I mean? yeah all right I've, I've, I've never been broad like that mm. i've kind of always spoken a bit i don't know people always think i'm not from York, right. yorkshire okay. Unless I've had a few drinks and then I definitely, it gets more pronounced All right. than m- more drinks I've had. Thanks for putting your proper <laughs> podcast voice on for us. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I always used to go out and like quite often I'd be wearing something like, I don't know, like a roll a, a roll neck or something mm. like that, like a camel overcoat or something. Okay, it's easy. Um, and a pair of Patrick Cox wannabe loafers or something okay. like that. And people would be a bit like, who the fuck is Who do you guy? think you are, lad? That is. Or spark you out some. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I know exactly the feeling, like small town, um, well, it's, the, it's kind of big towns. Ponty's quite big, Chorley's quite big. Mm-hmm. Um, and if you do wear anything a little bit outside of the norm, especially on a night out, night out, mm-hmm. like it is going to have an effect on people in it. And it's fascinating to see like what riles people. I can see why the uh, <laughs> the roll that got up people's noses. <laughs> oh, def- <laughs> defo, man from milk tray vibes go all, yeah, all, all yeah. day. Did you feel like compelled to do that for some reason? Were you, where were you getting your fashion inspiration from if it wasn't from the local area? I mean, I don't know. I, I kind of like, I, I always kind of like dressing up quite smart. Like, okay. um, so I, I don't know necessarily where that originally came from, but like mm-hmm. I always quite liked wearing a shirt and a tie and stuff and yeah. like getting dressed up quite sort of semi-formal really. From what it's kind weird. of age? Like late teens? <laughs> yeah, probably I think. Or even, yeah mad there's a there's a duality to all this because like obviously i kind of like i quite like sports wearing trainers as well yeah and i was into like r&b and Mm hip-hop and stuff so like i liked cargos and baggy stuff as well so it's like there's a a real when i went out i'd used to dress up smart but then in the daytime i might wear some really baggy combats yeah and a fubu top you know it's just like (laughs) well we'll get on to talking about the hip-hop side of things but (laughs) do you think that that like flossy dressing well dressing to impress kind of thing is quite hip hop whichever way you decide to do mm-hmm. it in whether it's smart suits or whether it's like the more kind of blinged out get off fabulous as it would have been in the late 90s mm-hmm. early 2000s where so maybe it is from music did you draw any inspiration specifically from that I don't know whether I mentioned to you before I worked at HMV for a long time okay I didn't so know like that. when it was a proper record shop yeah so I worked for HMV for nearly a decade right like so and across different sections of the shop. So, and I worked in Leeds for many years. Mm. And then I worked in London, Oxford Street in the basement. So lots of world music, lots of Brazilian, African, like across the spectrum of that stuff. So all of this was giving me a broad appreciation for everything, Culture you know what I mean? in general, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, and like big love of jazz. So like, uh, which originally stemmed from hip hop, obviously looking to see who sampled what and yeah, you know, okay. so all of these things were, you know, so music has played a massive, massive role in my general, I mean, I'm still, I'm a, I'm a big vinyl buyer, so like, yeah. I've amassed a lot of records. Nice, mate. <laughs> it's a good thing to spend your money on. That's what I spent my entire street. It's my pension, long. man. Yeah. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. Hope they're still in vogue on Discogs and that's still running when we get to eight, yeah. It's surprising, actually, what it all adds up to. Mm. Not yeah. vinyl weighs a ton. Literally. Mentioned earlier you're in Northampton and that London was a part. Have you lived in a lot of different places and what kind of effect did those have on what you were wearing? I think London's a biggie in the sense of um, it's just so free. Like you, mm. you go to London and no matter what you're wearing, nobody bats an eyelid. There's a sort of freedom of anonymity in London where you kind of like you don't have to adhere to anything. Like you think about your small town mentalities and stuff like a lot of people wear what they wear to fit in yeah in london you don't have to wear anything specifically to fit in if you don't Mm. want to kind of thing so i always felt like i could be like 
my extra self, you know what I mean? Okay. And, 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 and like, you know, I think a lot of people think I do dress a bit extra sometimes, but that's just me. So yeah, like, it's nuts. London is that like, it's one on its own, getting on the tube and stuff, you see the full cross section and uh, you do see people in things that you'd never see in any other cities. It's always inspiring to me. So when were you there? Um, how long were you there for? I lived in London for like only like a year and a half, I think. Yeah. But then though the, during that time, I had lots of friends living in London. So, so prior to that, there was lots of trips up and down and stuff. Considering what the stuff that you are interested in now, was there a lot of kind of like pilgrimages to Soho to check out the the, the shops, the Drakes and the Nepenthes shops that you were getting interested in then? I mean, like, obviously at that time, there was no, there was no, well, there was no Nepenthes or anything like that. Okay. It, was, it was like hideout really and stuff like that. So like talking like, Back in an era when I was maybe a bit more streetwear-y, I would go to hideout for their... I remember going and getting the Dilla T-shirt from the Stussy Dilla okay. uh, T-shirt from that. Dilla, Dilla that Saved My Life, is it? Uh, maybe it was a Donuts one or something, okay. but, like, again, I sold all my, I sold all my Stussy off, man. That's a like, healthy profit, I hope. No, it was like, <sighs> well, before the reboom, if you like, before right. it was reborn, and yeah. I wish I'd held on to a lot of my trainers because... Mm some serious dough there now did you know. keep them in good nick as well yeah man lots of them box fresh man so it's just like atmos am ones that i really just wish i'd kept hold of what kind of price are we talking for them now god knows what those atmos multiple are, hundreds yeah yeah defo yeah, yeah yeah i don't i don't look anymore because it's too depressing <laughs> it's like upsetting honestly it's like me look at my crypto wallet <laughs> So you live in Leeds-ish now, Bramley specifically. Bramley, yeah. What brought you back up here? The salmon-like desire to return to your spawning ground? Pretty much. Mm. I think I'd, I'd got to a point where I was just like, okay, I've, done a, I've lived in a few places. I really feel like I want to move back to my roots. And this might sound a bit weird, but like I wanted to come and be around my parents as well. Yeah. Like, you know, your parents start getting a bit older and you're like, I want to live nearish by so yeah. I can hang out with them a bit. Yeah. You know, they're like legends. Yeah. So, sounds it. Like, from what you were telling us before about the materialist brand and your relationship with your mum over that, check out the bonus content if you want to know more about that. <laughs> it sounds like, a, you know, a pretty strong pull for you. Yeah. Family is important, man. Yeah. So, definitely. Um, so, it's good to be. Good to be good to come back for that. But clothes wise in Leeds, was there a big difference between what you because I presume you were tripping into the city from Pontefract as a teen? That's your local Defo, yeah. city. Maybe Wakefield's got a pull, but Leeds, I presume, is where you went if you wanted to do a bit of shopping. I loved Leeds growing up. Always corn exchange. Yeah. Um I remember I just I used I just used to go and buy like a pair of baggy combats in every colour and yeah. baggy t shirts and stuff and and then but then equally like uh, when I was at college, I was like, it's definitely like a bit of an indie kid, you know what I mean? Okay. I had leather jackets with massive lapels in mm. like a really bad diarrhea brown kind of colour, you know what I mean? That, <laughs> I think I had something <laughs> very, very similar yeah. that I bought from Leeds Festival. Um, Style after Brad Pitt in the uh, Fight Club. For sure, something. yeah, definitely resembled that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, I obviously had a bit of hair then at that stage, big floppy hair and okay. stuff. Yeah, yeah. But what style were you rocking? I definitely had like a... Like a quiffy, uh, maybe not curtains, but like okay. I, I definitely had a side part in and quite, yeah. a, quite a you know not a bowl cut either, yeah. but it was a bit that the, the that indie way. version rather than the emo version as well. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So I was a bit of an indie lad. So those places in Leeds, like the Corn Exchange, they're so exciting as a teenager. It's like your first experience of indie retail. I mm -hmm. think I, I had a similar experiences with places in Manchester. Afflex. Yeah, precisely that. And Leeds nowadays, like what, 15, 20 years down the line, how has it changed since you were visiting it, visiting it as a kid? I, I love Leeds, like I'll always love it. Yeah. It's, but for me, I just think that it's kind of become quite, um, I mean, there's lots of little pockets of things going on, mm. but the high streets seem to be coming more and more kind of, just kind of like commercial. Yeah. Um, that, yeah, Like I said, there's good little food scene as well. There's like, there's, there's plenty going on. Yeah. But I think... Food's banging in Leeds now. There's 
it's so much better than I. When I lived there first time ten years ago, you can get something from every corner of the globe, and it's the best example of it. You know, Manchester's kind of, I would say, arguably, it's always that Manny Lee's mm. rivalry, isn't it? You know what I mean? Yeah. Manchester's edging it for me now these days. Okay. Food wise. Okay. I don't know if you can shed any light on this because um, previous guest Stan Chow, proud man Union, mm -hmm. said that when he was going over to Leeds in the nineties he was noticing people doing things there that people in Manchester hadn't switched onto yet. And he said that Mancunians were, or people from around the country were looking to Leeds specifically as like a, a very forward thinking place in terms of what people wear. Um, I know you're a bit more of a, a scholar on fashion history and stuff than I am. Do you know if I think at any... that time, right? definitely, I think definitely Leeds has been a leader. Is it the same leader now? Okay. Like, and how, how was it a leader then then? Was the shops that weren't existing anywhere else or were people dressing more experimentally that it hadn't caught on everywhere else? Yeah, I think the music culture was a big thing as well. So lots of club scenes mm. happening around the area. Hip store was in its Trail kind of like him. Yeah. Uh, glory years then. Really kind of like, you know, Everton and Burt really set out a blueprint for, you know, which everyone else then, you know, decided that they were going to, Oh, we should do something like this. Yeah, yeah. You know, big up hip for that time. They, they, they were pioneers, man. My mate Ellie said that I should get Everton on as a guest on here. So I would, I would agree. Yeah, yeah. yeah I always like see him about in Leeds. Yeah. He's put a good word in. Yeah, he's been ignoring my DMs. So <laughs> yeah, man. Like um, he's yeah, he's a he's a legend. So yeah. Le Leeds Leeds legend. Leeds Leeds Leeds. Yeah, Leeds Leeds. Leeds. Goes the chant. Get it in there. Just had a bit of a costume change because of the uh, temperature in here. But uh, tell me a little about the stuff that you wear these days, and particularly about your process for putting together an outfit. Because when I see um, your yeah, Insta Fit pics, it always looks very composed. It looks thought about. And it looks like something that you enjoy doing, like the kind of process of piecing something together. I mean, as sad as it sounds, it's probably one of the things I take the most enjoyment in life. You know, what I mean, it's oh, like it's lovely, man. <laughs> Sometimes it can be quite, you know, thought through. And then other times it can just be like literally thrown together in minutes. Mm. Um, yeah, there's certain certain outfits that are really premeditated. Yeah. That like it's it's been percolating in my mind for like months sometimes, you know yeah. what I mean? I, I'm yeah. going to wear that with that. I just need something else to just finish that off. So when I find that one thing, that outfit's going to bang. And that but, excites you like... Uh, yeah. From a consumer perspective, like when you find that thing that you've yeah. been looking for, it can. Really but I won't just place. settle for a second best thing. It has to be the right thing sometimes. Imagine. So, like, okay. so sometimes you, I wait for that right thing. Yeah. Um, but then other times, like literally, I'll just like, it will be like instinctual. I'll just like literally go to my wardrobe, bam, 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 pull a load of stuff out. I suppose it just depends on how I'm feeling that day. It's just like sometimes I'll hone in on a specific item and make base my outfit around that item. Yeah. Sometimes I'll pick a colour and that colour is my colour of that day and I'm like, you know, and it, yeah, it's just a mood thing for me, I think yeah. more than anything. It's like, uh, it's how I feel when I get out of bed. It's looking at the weather forecast. It's who I'm going to go see. It's mm, what you're going to go do. What, yeah. And based on all of those things, it's kind of like, that's what I'm doing. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's very apparent that you do enjoy it from um, the social media angle. And it's very apparent that you do it for those reasons, like build it around the particular outfit. But there's one thing, like in my deep dive, going back through your Instagram and looking at outfits from 10, 12, 13 years ago, the layering aspect of it is something that's always been strong. And you've always, or for a long, long time, you've done the top button and then button arrangements to show off the different layers has always been a big part of what you do. Uh, it's like a signature move for me <laughs> yeah. and a lot of people seem to I don't know were people doing that other people doing that when you were doing it I'm not saying you were the first person ever to do a top button up but it seems like you're doing it a long time before the kind of super stylized goopy made um, shoots of today that have employed that tactic I feel like you know Daiki has got a lot to answer for it's like all his look books and how they styled things back in the day okay this is Mr. Engineer garments for those people who don't know. Mr. Daiki Suzuki, yeah. All right. He changed the game, basically, for, for me and a lot of other people, I think. And again, I'm going to mention Luki. He said to me, like, you're someone who really um, 
takes that EG engineering garments um, ethos and goes the whole hog with it. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. And yeah, I, I love that. I love kind of like configuring things. I guess it's like having like find, modular clothing. Almost. Yeah, finding finding new ways of configuring things is like something that I find really fun. Yeah. Or doing something in a slightly idiosyncratic way. So putting a vest over a, a trench coat with a hood on it or something. So it just changes the you know like the shape the lines yeah yeah. Every, yeah yeah everything about it is you know it just takes something that is otherwise sort of fairly ordinary and makes it look otherworldly Extra, almost ordinary. yeah 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 i think ugh, within that there, there lies a bit of a a problem in some ways because it's like i think some people just think Oh, here's Matt just being a bit try hard again, being a bit too extra. You know what I mean? Okay. So someone used the word costumey to describe me recently, okay. <laughs> and I'm a bit like, shots fired. It's yeah, man. It's ultimately, I'm always going to dress how I want to dress because it's yeah. for me. It's not, f despite the fact that I'm like posting it on Instagram for other people to mm. see it. It's it's part. It's my self expression. You know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, in that sense, you have to be self motivated as far as that stuff goes. Yeah. So. That's not me. So you seem like the kind of guy that's been through a few fashion eras. Are there any of those that you look back on and think, what the fuck was I playing out there kind of <laughs> thing? Or when you were saying that you dress for yourself now, were you ever dressing for someone else and it felt uncomfortable? Yeah, I think I've had my moments. Okay. Definitely. Yeah. When, when specifically we're talking about it? Yeah, I think... Um, Definitely sort of teenage years, late teens. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I mean, there, there was definitely a time when I, in my 20s as well, where I think I had like frosted tips as well, which was like... And yeah, we don't, inspired, we, was we it? Don't, we don't speak of that anymore. <laughs> it's like, yeah, those those pictures are burned, you know. What was it? Was it punk inspired? Was it some 41 No, I wish, I wish, or? I wish, no. It's like, I don't know. It was a will to be different kind of thing. Probably, yeah, I, it, yeah. I mean, like, there are some pictures locked away somewhere still, but, like, I didn't bring those with me. You didn't. You said you were <laughs> going to dig into the family <laughs> album, but I kind of beat you to the punch on that one. Um, show me after the recording. Yeah, I'll slide into your DMs. <laughs> <laughs> You'll repost them. <laughs> yeah, everyone's got it. Teenage years are a, a dark time. I think just naturally as a species, you just find who you are, aren't you? And um, Yeah, I was definitely floating a few different looks. Seeing what's stuck. I don't know, some days I'd have like an offspring t-shirt on or whatever. Yeah. And then some days I'd be like, I don't know, going to see an indie gig somewhere or yeah. pulp or something like that. Or, yeah. And then equally I'd be into R&B and listening to Tribe Called Quest or, you yeah. know, it's like, so it's like there was a real um, mixed kind of, you know, it's like an outfit for each of those. Yeah, I was exactly <laughs> the same, mate. And some of them last and some of them don't. And I, I can see hip hop influence in the shapes of the clothes that you wear now. Um, tell us a little bit about your FUBU era. <laughs> Where were you getting your FUBU from? I mean, like, I, I think back about those years and like, you know, I was going to like, do you remember those lick parties in Leeds, the Trevor Nelson, like, so it was just R &B like, parties, just R&B parties yeah. basically. And just baggied out, you know what yeah. I mean? And kind of just like, Bad sunglasses as well. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like tinted, tinted lenses and stuff like that. Yeah, it was it, obviously oversized, like American football jerseys and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah. I remember having a, a a few like basketball jerseys as well. Yeah, oversized. So my first uh, experience of that was going to Preston TK Max and seeing Sean John and Fat Farm and Fubu and all these American hip hop oh. makes that I kind of seen in magazines and on MTV kind yeah. of stuff. And trying one for the first time, it was mind blowing for me. Triple Five Soul as well. Yeah, um, yeah. LRG, there was like yeah, loads of yeah. those kind of brands that were kind of oversized sweats and, and I, I loved it all. Yeah. One of my favorite items, <laughs> talking about the, the sportswear, like the basketball vest, the American football vest. Do you know the brand Griffin? Oh yeah, yeah. Um, from down Devon way, yeah, Jeff yeah. Griffin. Like I, obviously, follow, I follow that guy now. Yeah, yeah, dead, dead good. And I've been doing it for years. I found just searching my own name on oh uh, yeah <laughs> on eBay because my surname's Tom Griffin. Um, is Griffin, and obviously Griffin popped up the brand and they had this like XL uh, yellow and red vest with Griffin on the back. So I was like, oh my god, that is going to be this <laughs> like my own name on the back of a basketball vest. Sick. And it had like um, 
Vietnam era silhouette of a um, chopper on the front. And I think it said peace across it. So it was this like twist on a basketball vest. So it was, it was hip hop and it was, it was quite fashiony. Like the, I got really into the brand after that. Got they're, some, they're pioneering brand. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's like, you know. I had some punk uh, bondage pants with like zips up the back and um, tassels going between the legs and stuff like that. That I could just about get, get away with wearing at college. But it was, it was the hip hop look that I was looking for, but with my own name on. That's mm -hmm. old school eBay. But yeah, that's my experience of those hip hop brands, TK Maxx. Are you a TK Maxxer? Eh? I love a TK Maxx. It's class, isn't it? It's still fun. Yeah, I mean, less, less so these days. I'll get less and less good stuff out there any particular finds that spring to mind that you still think oh that was a bag oh that was a, a rare find i've had engineer gamuts out of there okay i mean which is like what what is the path that they took to get here i always Ex think exactly yeah. yeah i can imagine the the retail uh neurons when you found the eg in sirens going yeah. off mate yeah, yeah. <laughs> buy on site <laughs> double xl oh two of them We talked a little bit about this in the bonus footage, but you've been making your own gear over the past few years with Materialist Made. Tell me a little bit more about that. The idea came that I wanted to make a, a shorter scarf mm. that didn't didn't really exist at that point, or I'd not found anything that really fitted that brief for me. And obviously I think part of my interest in clothing is fabrics and stuff like yeah. that. So, And Materialist kind of ties in with that ideal, I yeah. guess. So I think we came up with this idea that we were going to... We being... Me and my mum. Oh, nice. yeah. Should have said, yeah. It's uh, Shout out, Mumsy. Yeah. Susan's grand. <laughs> yeah, that's my mum on Instagram. Yeah, we, we basically started to hunt for fabrics. So from all over the world. So, so far we've had like um, Japanese, African. We've had... We, basically we've had like a, a plethora of different uh, fabrics from different countries. Yeah and really kind of taking in lots of different styles. Um, so we've got some more African stuff coming up soon, which I'm quite excited about. And is it all neckwear based? We've got scarves. Did you do some more hank like I'm going to do some, I'm doing some neckerchiefs. So okay. We've got some fabrics for that. Obviously it's like when you work full time, having to, having, I just feel like I don't really have enough time to devote to it. Yeah. And obviously I don't want my mum feeling like she's working in a yeah. sweat, sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so we kind of like it, it's kind of a slow a slow burn thing for the both of us I think we we don't really want to outsource production or anything we want to just do it ourselves and keep it small and yeah so we've got some nice labels for it now and stuff oh and, nice and a, a nice little stamp for uh, packaging and stuff like that so it's we're kind of slowly getting there and kind of making something that we like like ourselves basically mm. it's kind of like um, you've got to love what you're making, I think, and yeah. you know. So keep it slow, keep it um, keep it small batch, keep it enjoyable for you. Yeah, that's the most important thing. Um, and yeah, so I think so far it's been great. Yeah, pe people's reception's been really good. Ace, um, and we're just yeah bubbling under, if you like. It sounds like the very antithesis of fast fashion, slow in both kind of mindset and delivery, and yeah, yeah I think, mindful. Uh, yeah, buy buy one one nice thing. Well, when the uh, the kerchiefs come out, I will buy one, and you can teach me how to tie it elegantly around my neck. Cause I'm still yeah. shit at that. <laughs> oh man, so am I. Yeah, you're not. Think you're of... not. I've seen I've seen decent ties. Who, who's it, who in your mind is the best tire of a neckerchief around the neck? Who's it look best on? I think Luke's obviously got it. Luke's got it down. Um, he won't share the secrets with do me. You know, um, Mused by Mars as well. He's, he's yeah, he's, yeah. He, he's, he's a good he's kerchief got, tie. He's got a nice, uh, yeah. There's, there's a secret to it. Maybe my neck's too thick, actually. Maybe I need a more elegant neck to be able to <laughs> tie it round. I bought two Casablanca silk uh, neckerchiefs this year. I've not worn them once. They just sat in my wardrobe waiting for me to be bold enough to wear one. Are they, are they bright? Are they, are they One of them spicy? is uh, off-white with a, like, a muted blue and red on it in the kind of shape of an old airline cigarette brand thing. okay cool yeah. beautiful colors i love it and the other one's a bit more fruity literally it's got an orange on it nice um, but yeah cream and orange so they're cool I'll, i just need to figure out what to do with them but i mean that's part of it it's like you know getting your head around yeah so it's quite a flamboyant statement yeah. if you like leon Cerrone, sorry is it, oh boss man yeah, yeah. He's, See, he's someone you need to get on here he's, he's up in scotland right yeah so he's in glasgow yeah okay but, um he's 
Sound dude. He always looks great style. Me, yeah. He's Steve just done a, done a barber thing. Lovely guy, great style. Um, and pretty, he's no G, you know what I mean? He's, okay. Yeah, yeah. Doing it since day. Yeah. All right, we'll look him up. The aforementioned Luke Butler, previous guest of this. Go and look him up. I think it was episode two. When I asked him who he wanted to see on My Own Garms, he, without missing a beat, said materialist. Um, he said that he tapped you up for a bit of knowledge on the Nepenthes stable, like when he was first getting into it. Engineered garments in particular. Where did your obsession with that start? I think I'd, from a fashion forum that I posted on, I'd seen someone post about the brand. Okay. And then I bought something from the classifieds section of that forum. Mm. Um, was that the only way to get it in England at the time or was there anywhere um, stocking it? I think there might have been a couple of stockists. It was very small concern back then though, I think. So okay. um, I want to say it was... 2010 or 2011 something like that right i'm not i'm not quite sure timeline wise but um yeah basically it was like a cpo overshirt like a green contrasting cuffs um still got it but yeah i think that kind of set me on a i i, I just became interested in what the brand was about the more i looked at the lookbooks and saw the sort of different ideologies coming through so obviously there's referencing like military hunting gear um, some of the tailoring is kind of like, you know, you could you could wear a full suit engineered garments and yeah. you could dress it up and it could look super smart. Yeah. But it's unstructured enough to look, you know, to break it down and it to then look, um, you know, an everyday wearable garment. But yeah, yeah, yeah. This is it. So I love the um, again the duality of all of that. It's kind of like you can be as extra as you like with EG. Or yeah. you can be as pared down with it as you like. Like someone like Kafka, for instance, their buy is all quite the formal side of... Right. Whereas, like, you look at how Nepenthes style their stuff and it's got almost, they almost do, like, a punky edge to it, like the way that they combine their stuff. Um, so it's like, that for me represents what the brand's all about. It's kind of like, you can, you can do so much with it. The jacket I'm wearing today is, like, it's reversible as well, so it's camo on one side and navy blue on the other side. So it's like... So it's pared down or extra, depending yeah. on what you want to do. So it's kind of, I, I love that fun element to it. You know, it's like, it just changed my ideology totally. Tell me a little bit about the structure of this brand, because I think I'm confused as to what is what. Is engineered garments and needles and South to West Day, are they all separate brands that fall under one umbrella? Or is, is Nepenthes a, just a shop or is that like a umbrella company for all yeah. of them? So Nepenthes is the, the sort of overarching. Yeah. And EG is Daiki's Suki's brand. Right. And then um, South to West Day and AIE. And yeah. they also sell Sasquatch, Sasquatch Fabrics, Fabrics, which yeah. is another brand that I find really interesting. Yeah, like um, Caribbean influence. Yeah, um, it's just a real... It's nuts, isn't it? But, you know, again, under that Nepenthes umbrella, it covers lots of bases and and the shops are great. Like, I, I love going in their shops. It's like... Yeah, Luke was saying how much of a... A brilliant retail experience it is how encouraging and like yeah how the staff just want the very best for you in there and i've still do i still when i go in certain clothes shops i still get that kind of like do i should i be in this one is this for me the kind of thing and sometimes i don't go in because of that yeah. and this seems like one that i will immediately have that brilliant feeling of when you go in oh you know we want you to have a lovely experience in here you know, I've worked in shops all my life and when you kind of go into a shop that feels right and, yeah. and the staff are engaging and it's kind of, nothing feels too forced, you know what I mean? It's yeah. just, it, you know, a re, a re, the retail experience is like, I think, you know, a lot of people could learn from the way Nepenthes do things. It's kind yeah. of like the, when you go in their shops, it's, it's super welcoming. I say with their, when you go in their shop, I've only ever been in the, the London one, obviously. Okay. So NY is like somewhere I want to go and like multiple Japanese branches is obviously where I want to go in all them. Nepenthes World Tour coming to yeah, 2024. So, yeah, this is it. Yeah, so when I get out, over to Japan, there's no question I'm going to be tapping up some some of the EG stores. Exciting, like, man. Some of the capital shops as well, no yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah. Shout out them guys. Top three selected. So Matt, I want a top three from you, please. I know you're into build quality and longevity and sustainability and all them good things. 
I want to know your top three brands that you think are built to last. I'm not going to mention EG. Okay. Because we've touched on that. Yeah. So that's kind of a given at this point. All right. So I'm going to say like Polo Ralph Lauren. I still love wearing all of their stuff, like for whatever season as well. Like so, um, so in the same sort of way as well, I would put like Brooks Brothers, like OG Brooks Brothers stuff in the in the in the mix there, and say like, you know, you look at what Drakes are doing now, and you, for me, like the a lot of their references is, is from that era of Ivy stuff. You okay. Know what I mean? So like, I think um, I kind of. I look at those as those two brands as kind of like, especially like if you get good old vintage Ralph stuff and yeah, yeah, uh, vintage Brooks Brothers stuff, it's kind of like yeah, it's solid, it's solidly built, you know. What yeah. I mean, like um, I wear a lot of Ralphie rugby shirts and they do feel tank like in mm -hmm. their construction and uh, the age really well as well. I think I like the like the, the obviously a lot of the US sizing as well on it is yeah. kind of a little bit looser as well, yeah. which is you know I always quite liked getting. Vintage Ralph, or because of the dimensions are a bit a bit bigger as well. Yeah. So and as well as the construction being built to last, like it's pretty timeless stylistically as well. It's you know, especially the kind of tailoring side of stuff. It is forever yeah, in it for sure, man. Like I've never got rid of any Ralph stuff. I've, yeah. I've still got all the same stuff from that I've had for like, you know some of it probably twenty years. So. Yeah. And OCBD is never gonna. Uh, go out of fashion is it you know mm. so it's like those those kind of things are you know a cord blazer or whatever nah man timeless yeah so we're having ralphie as one we're we having brooks brothers as two or have you lump, lump them together we'll them together okay yeah, yeah let's have that as one um, who's the second one i would say probably beams okay um another japanese style again one. like i would say in a similar way to eg like beams has lots of uh prints and kind of slightly off the wall stuff as well but their staples are great, you know, yeah. like, so they're, they're like two pleat pant that they do is just like become like such a staple for loads of people mm. based on the kind of like sort of semi balloon kind of shape on them. Uh, and then just like stuff like they're again, they're just everyday stuff like their hoodies are just really nice, wash really well, keep their color really well. I feel like I've got a lot of beam stuff and I just wear it, I just wear it. It's a great one to keep an eye on. Every day. eBay and Vinted and Depop and stuff mm -hmm. because you can get that stuff second and it's almost better when it has been worn a little bit. Yeah. I've had a few Beams bits off Vinted recently and they feel, I don't know, like the, part of the job's been done for you a little bit when you get them and I think that's a really uh, enticing thing in a brand, isn't it? If, yeah. it? if it feels good second hand, then it's built to last. Yeah, I quite like a broken in garment sometimes yeah, as well. Defo. Yeah, definitely. Okay, and who's your third and final built to last brand? Um, I'm gonna even though I don't own lots by this brand, it's a brand that I've that I admire and I and I again production values I think are really good. Mm. Um is uh Mon, Mon Italy. Okay. Um yeah. so yeah, I think um again as a design house, I'm a big fan of Mon Italy, Yucatan, um Chimula and that stable of brands. All They're all related as well, are they? Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, so they all come from uh, the one guy, uh, Yuki Matsuda. Okay. Um, and, uh, yeah, he's uh, a legend in the in the game as well. Um, and, um, yeah, I've got maybe two or three bits of Monitorly. It's yeah. kind of like a brand that somehow I've managed to not buy lots from, and but... I love the equally. I love like what they do. Yeah, basically. yeah. Um, I've got a pair of navy ripstop pants and the uh, possibly my best fitting pair of trousers for my weird shaped ass. So yeah, I'll uh, I'll have to buy a few more of their bits. Are they pleaty or are they? Uh, no, they're more like flat fronted. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, not too tailored. A bit more, no pockets, but chinoy, I guess. Yeah, kind of wide. They're nice. Yeah, I think it's fun. It's fun to see like the people's migration towards wider fits in general like you know um, maybe people aren't at the needles hd pants stage <laughs> yet uh, for, for a lot of it but like generally like you can see the, the 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 sort of mass movement towards a wider pant which i think is something to be applauded you know yeah I mean? yeah. yeah not got the i've been doing this since 2007 like oh, man. feeling mate i've got no time for gatekeeping <laughs> whatsoever it's like 
none of us own this stuff. You yeah. know what I mean? We don't, we can't, you can't own a look. You can't own a scene. Mm. It's like, we are, we all just out here just wearing clothes. You know what I mean? So like, yeah. just enjoy wearing clothes and support each other. It's like, life's too short. You know what I mean? It's like, and it's just, I mean, I say it's just clothes. It's like, it's important. <laughs> Massively important, but like... Preach, know. mate. Yeah. <laughs> I'm into that. So on the subject of sustainability and being built to last, that type of stuff, how do you manage the insatiable lust to just buy fucking <laughs> all of the clothes that you can afford and like put yourself in massive debt doing it? I mean... Because I struggle on that side of things. I mean, I don't have any credit cards, basically, <laughs> for starters. Solid. Um, I don't use Klarna. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I do try and live within my means. Mm. So like, uh, but I still probably buy too much. Yeah. I, I I mean like, thing is for me like Lizzie will always be like, "You're shopping again." I'm like, "Well, I'm not shopping. I'm looking." Mm. And there's a difference. It's like it's almost like there's. I just want to be aware of everything. Yeah. So like, I'm just forever just like you know, you'll find me daily just like scouring every website imaginable you know that what i mean such a weird concept for someone that doesn't do it what you're looking at clothes for if you're not going to buy them and, and especially looking at them in a retail context because you you know scrolling down matches mr port like the, all the sites you know it's just you soak it up don't you and it is inspiring for you i suppose it's, it, it's kind of like it's part of the process it's mm. part of the you know you kind of sometimes have to see something on a in a slightly different context and it changes your mind about something yeah and then you know multiple multiple places selling the same stuff as well yeah the styling of it might be totally different it's like i'm always looking for a way of wearing something that might be everywhere yeah but finding my take yeah as you were saying about finding your little take on your bondage pants earlier <laughs> on, you know I mean? it's like you know i feel like yeah we're all looking for our little take on things and yeah yeah so you before you mentioned like uh, you've managed to wait for particular items to be produced before you pull the trigger on it and you're quite perfectionist about what you opt for. That's obviously a mindful way of shopping, consuming. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've had to work towards? Were you a little bit more trigger happy uh, 10, 15 years ago? Or? Yeah, defo. Yeah. Defo used to just probably buy things, buy a brand because they were that brand. Yeah. Um, regardless of whether it was the right color for my skin tone say mm -hmm. or because i've got no hair uh, on top it's kind of like some things would wash me out if it's like too beigey too pale okay and i'm wearing it on the top half right and i've got no hair right it's kind of like it can make me look a bit washed out you know that's uh, uh, something so, i've never considered before like well you, you've got a lustrous head of locks mate so. looking <laughs> pretty gray the sides and the top <laughs> got this fringe hide in my fucking car parks at the side as well <laughs> mate you, the, couple of years left the in the race distinguishing mate it's all good it's <laughs> thank all good. you so i was out on a shoot with our mutual pal sam binstead the other day shout out sam amazing photographer his studio work is impeccable uh you've been doing a bit of a collaborative project with him recently mm -hmm. um styling and that kind of stuff is that something you've done before or is this a bit of a new experiment for you and where would you like this kind of creative uh, collaboration to take you i feel like i've been kind of wanting to branch out and do bits and pieces here and there so yeah so this was the first real instance of us uh, we'd kind of done like a a sort of loosely themed promo shoot me and sam like a while back to kind of just like test the waters and see what we could do together yeah and um I, obviously i think it came out really good it looked amazing um, man Did, like describe it in a little bit of uh, for our audio listeners so yeah, I would say we 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 basically did three looks in in some studio where um, one was like a a gorpy outdoorsy uh, kind of like with a little snow peak lantern and stuff and, and the snow peak tent as the background drape yeah, was it that's it yeah looked incredible mate um, and then um, the other one was like a, a like a, a, a eg safari suit kind of vibe thing with a with a bucket hat and kind of the the fa pants uh, with the the, the leopard print on stuff like extra a bit extra as always yeah and we were, we were super happy with the with the results and yeah we got um one of my friends uh, from instagram marcus 
a slow fashion connoisseur. Okay. Do you follow him? I don't think I do. I'll okay. look him up. Yeah, nice dude. Okay. Um, he, uh, he put us in touch with someone at Haku, uh, which is a Osaka-based uh, Japanese clothing uh, company. Um, and uh, basically they agreed to, uh, to let us put a shoot together for them. Sick. And, uh, pick out some clothes I liked and so I, I did the styling um, I kind of wanted a model but they wanted me to be the model so I well, you wear it so well mate like you, you know you can style other people but you know yourself so well that you know what's going to work and it does sure yeah I feel like uh, knowing your body and stuff is important and I definitely feel like I know what works for me yeah thankfully I ordered the right sizes and stuff and yeah we did we, we did the shoot recently it's come out super well. I can't wait for people to see it. Buzzing. Um, yeah, like there's there's some really cool bits. and Well, he's an amazing photographer. And from what I've seen of your styling work, like it's a, a collaboration made in heaven. I'm excited to see what else you're doing. Hopefully these brands will get in touch and you'll get that all expenses paid trip to Osaka that you've been uh, hankering it, yeah. after. Next stop Japan. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Yeah. <laughs> Buzzing, mate. Yeah, fingers crossed for that one. Cheers, man. What is next for you then, mate? Any exciting brand collaborations on the cards? Have you got your eye on any massive winter coats this year? So as far as collaborations go, like um, hopefully I'm going to work with uh, Tan at uh, Lane 45 again. Do you okay. Know, do you know Lane 45? I don't think I do. No, what do they do? Um, the lead guy, Tan May Sachs, he's like, uh, he's just such a dude, basically. Right. Um, he, he's he got like, his his ideas about proportions and pocketry and use of fabrics he's kind of like again he's a really interesting character i think the way he art directs everything as well is pretty amazing like his so the the way that the website is laid out the way he gets his models wearing stuff it's kind of like it's such a cool looking brand what's your input going to be on the styling side of things or well i don't know hopefully um i don't know i hopefully i get to work with him yeah like I, like so i've had i've had some stuff from him uh, before big Sick. big green pants basically right okay. um but um he did reach out a while ago but i've been busy so like uh, hopefully i get to work with him again because i really like the brand look forward to seeing what you're creating mm, nice you. and on the big coat from big coat, the season oh, i know you've got a lot in the wardrobe already there's one big coat to one to rule them all <laughs> is that uh, is uh the uh, so this thing of ours yeah uh the ccp coat have you seen it okay it's what like, color is it orangey the, the one that i really like is is it's like sage and mint and it's like so basically it's a modular thing which okay. again is right at my strata but mm. uh so it's like a three piece kind of coat thing Mad. you can wear it all together or all you know separately so it's like a muffler and a vest and then a jacket under that so you can wear the vest separately the muffler separately or lay it all three of them up it's like it sounds built like, for you mate it's like next level ultra amazing. modular it's amazing sick all right um, shout out tim like he's uh he's, he's we're recording with tim later on this week as yeah. one of our guests so wicked um, oh well i'm, I'm really glad because um he's you know an innovator and someone who needs to be on here so tim is the owner of this thing of ours for those people who don't know um but he sounds like a super interesting dude as well so nice guy just great ideas about things and uh, getting stuff in that is not in anywhere else in this country. Yeah, and allowing people like me and Matt to live our retail <laughs> fantasies. <laughs> yeah. You have to show us a picture of that one after it sounds For, incredible. Mate, it's like, yeah, next level. Well, I hope it finds its way into your wardrobe <laughs> some point soon. And as someone who works in retail, what would you like to see more of on the high street, both as a consumer and professional? I'd probably touch on what I'd like to see less of. Okay. Um, Obviously, less fast fashion, less yeah. less kind of like people buying for immediacy and mm -hmm. not really thinking about where that's going to go after its relatively short lifespan. It seems to be a lot of things. You know, it's like you go to charity shops these days are just full of fast fashion. I mean, yeah. I, I get that that you know for a lot of people it's like it's for for for, what, for their budget and stuff is yeah. what they can afford. But um, I would sort of really want people to really question what they're buying these yeah. days it's like so difficult to do isn't it though and you see that kind of stuff in charity shops and often the prices are probably more than it would have been it's to buy a new website which is yeah. fucking ridiculous yeah. but changing people's 
minds to go and buy something that's a bit better quality from a charity shop for the same price that they would buy something from is it's tough in it um, yeah. especially when you've got the marketing spend that a lot of the big brands have too much greenwashing as well of like these big brands are kind of you know pushing this agenda that they're you know carbon neutral or you know like yeah um, ethically producing this this stuff and it's just like no mm. not at all like like Sam Binstead is obviously a champion of this stuff and yeah. Jordan Bunker as well. Like okay. he's got like a, a really interesting stance on all this stuff. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I, you know, I think people need to be a bit more thoughtful about what they're, what they're buying. Yeah. Um, less, less man-made fibers and stuff as well. Like, like denim, for instance, like most, so many high street denim brands have just got loads of elastine in, in, right. in, in the, in the jeans. So, they don't fully decompose. They just leave a like a plastic skeleton. skeleton. You know what I mean? So it's kind of like know that. you know, nuts. so stuff like that. It's kind of like man. Yeah, compostable clothes are what we want. Yeah, exactly. So those are what I don't want to see. What in terms of what I do want to see? Well, like more, more like like Tim's offering at this thing is like yeah. a prime example of someone who um, independent excellence kind of thing. Yeah, and yeah. he's he's made his own thing. Yeah, and. The brand roster speaks for itself because it's majority of it you won't see anywhere else, and obviously all the big brands have picked up on on those a lot of those brands unfortunately now as well. But yeah, you know, kind of inevitable in a way, unfortunately. But Tim, credit to him, he keeps innovating and keeps innovating, and he does. He's one step ahead all the time, and I think I've got so much respect for that. It's the one time where the gatekeeping can uh, get a, a pass in my book. You know, he yeah. needs to keep a lid on that shit because. You know, people are fucking leeching off him. Hundred percent, yeah. yeah. Um, not just the not just the product, but maybe a bit of the styling as well. And yeah. kind of like, I mean, I I do I I nick the styling from Anthony <laughs> and those guys a little bit as well because you know, like uh, it's fucking ace. It's they, amazing, man. They like, look amazing. Yeah. yeah, always. Yeah, the feed's class, isn't it? So, full respect, guys. <laughs> yeah, more of that kind of stuff. What a full street full of this thing of ours is. Yeah, and there's like obviously like there's there's other other places that do the same so there's Pancho and Lefty which are, if, you know, if you know that I don't know they, I mean they do lots of capital but they their brand roster is a, a nice mix over oh, um, in Japan no they're not they're not okay. they're in Europe somewhere alright I think but I, but I love well. going on their website I love the guys styling on there Yeah. so I follow them on Instagram the guys styling on there is amazing and I uh, got a shout out Tempest Works as well in um, in Amsterdam okay um, I love what those guys are doing so they're stocking like Norbit and Monitilly and, and, and a lot of other brands that I really dig. Uh, but their buys are really interesting. Right. So um, I think they've got some really standout items and I'm like, oh yeah. Nice. Ale as well, his, his, uh, his, his personal styling is, he, him and his missus always look amazing. So okay. shout out to those guys. So three thread in all these seems to be uh, independent retailers who are properly passionate about their particular niche. Mm -hmm. And there is obviously... There's room for more of that in on every high street, but yeah, exactly. It's like the, the, I'm not for this homogenous kind of brand list that is the same at every shop you go to. Yeah. It's like not for me. Final question: On a scale of one to ten, how much do you care about clothes? I mean, like it's it's everything. It's like it's such a expressive. It's just such a big part of my personality. I think and like. I, don't, I, hope, I hope my clothes don't define exactly who I am, but they are such a big part of me. It's kind of like, you know, they come as part of me, you know. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, if you ask Lizzie, she, my missus, she would say that, um, yeah, sometimes she thinks that clothes matter more than her and, like, okay. they don't. <laughs> <laughs> she likes the clothes, but not to the same extent. Yeah, she's, yeah, she thinks I'm a, yeah. bit, a bit obsessed. Okay. And so if you're going to put a number on it, are we top of the scale here? Yeah, 23. <laughs> 23 on 10. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It is. It's super important, man. Like, And I, I can see the joy and uh, the friendship and the kind of, obviously, it's part of your professional life that it's brought to you as a person. So to give it any lower than that would be a disservice, <laughs> I think. Yeah, man. It brings me so much joy in life, you know what I mean? So it's, yeah. Uh, Shout out clothes. Yay, clothes. <laughs> <laughs> nice one man thank you very very much for doing it it's a pleasure to chat I know we've met a couple of times before but it's good to have a proper sit down and, well yeah. yeah man and you know we'll hopefully be getting you 
in front of the camera at some point soon oh, as well. Please, so, mate. thank yeah. you. Yeah, so, before I go any grey, oh, I'll <laughs> love to get you involved, dude. So, nice one, man. Yeah, look forward get to them that. cheekbones in. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, top up that one for the heads. Massive thanks to Matt for making the trip across the Pennines and massive thanks to you for watching and listening. If you liked it, then don't forget to follow us on the socials. We're at my own gardens everywhere. Right, series three and we've still not got any sponsors. So if you're good at sorting that sort of thing out and you want a slice of the pie, do the DM slide and we can have a chat. Big shout out to Kian, Namisha and Alex for the technical support this week. Bunch of legends. We'll be back in a couple of days with a fit pick breakdown and another episode this time next week. Strangers. Oh, I guess almost by strangers. Breaking. My mind is breaking. Strangers. Oh, I guess almost by strangers.